play his hand. Um, I, I hope that he's not looking at this as, you know, uh, he may have more power or less power or whatever. It isn't about that. Um, I think that every one of us who is elected and has an elected election certificate to come here and represent Minnesotans um, understands how important that is. And, and we really need to put first uh, what Minnesotans need and, and what's good for Minnesotans. And I think if the governor sets politics aside um, and, and really focuses on what's good and right for Minnesotans, um, he's going to sign this bill. And, and we're going to have a good conversation about the other things that are on his list. I haven't ruled any of those out. Uh, I don't like a lot of them. I think that's not a mystery to anybody. Um, but we're going to talk about those things. If they're important to him and he thinks they're important to Minnesotans, we're going to have a good conversation about those. Uh, but I also am going to hold him accountable to his word that this bill won't be used as some sort of uh, hostage to get leverage on other things. And uh, those things are wrong. And, and to use uh, you know, relief for uh, veterans or college students as some sort of political leverage, um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to play that game. Um, and if the governor wants to play it, I can't save him from himself. Um, and and uh, I think he's going to end up doing the right thing at the end of the day, literally at the end of the day. Um, but uh, it's going to be in his hands. If, if I could, Mr. Speaker, to the gentleman's question, I think the governor should sign this bill because uh, it's his bill. Uh, his proposals that I carry as a courtesy, many of those items are in this bill. If you would have ever told me that we would pass over $100 million for working family credit, I would say that's not going to happen. You look at the conformity to make the department work better. You look at the just the policy and technical things. Make, not everything so technical in that bill. The department needs it. I took his provisions. See, in my world, there's three numbers. There's 68, 34, and 1. I have to have 68 votes in the House, 34 in the Senate, and one governor to sign it. And you know what? If you don't put part of the governor's bill in there, he's probably not going to sign it. But it's there. It's there. 68, 34, and 1. And being former president of the Summer Sunbeam Sports Club, I can count to 68. I can do that. I can do that. And so Senate provisions are in this bill. House provisions are in this bill. There was not one dissenting votes from the Senate DFL and very few from the House DFL. This is, you know, because I had to get to the one. I knew I could get to 68. I've got great support for my caucus. I knew I could get to 68. 34, a little more dicey. Now, how do we do that? Well, we did it. And I give kudos to Senator Rod Scott, my DFL counterpart in the Senate, and Chair Ann Rask. And the conferees on both sides were amazing. We had Swidzinski, Pulowski, Draskowski, Baradski and David Ski. <laughs> we had them all. We had them all. So the reason, to your question, sir, the, the reason the governor needs to sign this is because, number one, it's the right thing to do. It's many of his provisions are in there. Why? Because I need to get to that one. I need to get to that one. Mr. Speaker, 